So I want to welcome you to this sub-plenary session on adaptation um, and, and give you a little overview, some housekeeping of, of how we'd like to run this session. Ultimately, this discussion, as the other sub-plenaries, are meant to help us think about what we're going to do after we leave Copenhagen. Um, and the session is also meant to help just gauge where the consensus of all of us here in the room lies right now. It's not meant to generate any kind of consensus. It's simply meant to gauge the level of consensus in the room. Um, and, and to start off, let me just introduce myself. My name is Heidi Cullen, and uh, I'm a climate scientist as well as a journalist uh, who's been covering climate change issues for over five years now. Um, my job essentially as moderator is to just make sure that we have a lively and useful discussion, and, and honestly, with the panelists that we have here today, uh, I, I know that that's, that's going to happen. And before I introduce them to you, just one quick word, perhaps, on framing the session a little bit more, and, and just the notion of adaptation in general. Um, you know, as, as an engineer and a scientist, I've always felt that, that adaptation is so important, and in many respects, I suppose, it's always been seen as kind of the less sexy or less controversial aspect of climate change. Mitigation kind of gets all of the attention, but I think adaptation is so important. As an engineer, I've always felt that climate change is fundamentally an infrastructure issue, and as a scientist, I'm very, very deeply concerned and interested in this whole notion of sustainable ecosystem management. And I think that really is what comes together when we talk about forests and adaptation. So I think that's hopefully, I think, one of, one of the areas of discussion that, that can come up this morning. So to start out, let me introduce our panelists. And, and I'll first just say what we're going to do is each of our panelists is going to speak for roughly five minutes. I'm, I'm going to just try to remind everyone when their four-minute mark comes, and I'll, I'll try not to be too mean about it. Um, but we've got five minutes for each panelist to discuss and share their ideas. Then at about 11.30, we want to turn it over to you and begin taking questions. Um, and at about 12.15, we're actually going to take a survey. And I should say that the survey is four questions. Um, you're going to be using this remote control-like device. And literally, what you'll see is, is when I open um, the question, it'll turn green at the top. And then you literally, you've got, it's going to be multiple choice tests, essentially. And then you'll just pick your response, whether it be one, two, three, or four. We'll go through the questions together. And literally, right after we take the survey, we'll see what the answer is. And the survey is meant to go into a two-page summary that C4 is going to be submitting to Evo de Boer at the end of the day. And this, like I said, is, is really meant to gauge the consensus of the audience. So before I introduce our panelists, I want to thank C4, and I also want to thank um, IUFRO for hosting this event and, um, and, and just welcome you to, to ask questions and, and raise discussion. And when you do that, please introduce yourself before you do ask the question. So, first, I'm going to start by introducing Phil Cottle. He's actually sitting two down for me. Um, Phil is the managing director and founder of Forest Re, uh, which is a reinsurance company. And it was established in 2005 in order to de-risk investment into forestry for all stakeholders. Now, basically, the way this forest risk assessment is done is by using forest models that incorporate climate change trends and then there's a design in place to actually try to, to develop these risk transfer instruments. So I think for purposes of our discussion today, Phil will be um, a really great representative of how we manage these risks and how we create tools to manage those risks. Um, sitting next to Phil is Bastian Lumen. Um, and Bastian has more than 23 years of experience as a forest manager. He's someone who is on the ground and can help represent that perspective. Uh, he's been working of late in Papua New Guinea, uh, but he's worked all throughout Latin America doing research and development on natural forest management planning. Uh, Bastian is the regional coordinator for Latin America and the Caribbean of the IUFRO special program for developing countries, and he also coordinates the INIA C4 funded research project on mitigation and adaptation. Sitting to my left is Dr. Martin Perry, 
um, who is a visiting professor at the Grantham Institute and Center for Environmental Policy, Imperial College London. Martin was a co-chair of the IPCC um, AR4 report, focusing on impacts and working group two. And I think Martin can really help us understand the urgency of the issue and give us the perspective of a scientist who's been working on impacts for quite some time. And then all the way down at the end of the table, we have the women bookending the, the panel here. We have uh, Catherine Sierra. Uh, Catherine is the Vice President of Sustainable Development at the World Bank. Um, and Catherine has been at the World Bank since 1978. Um, the Vice Presidency, her job, has overall responsibility for the bank's work in environment and natural resource management, social development, science and technology policy, and her purview falls over a very wide range that, that actually encompasses agriculture and rural development, transport, water, energy, and urban policies and strategies. That's a, a very large purview. And I think it, it represents the fact that, that how, we, you know, how we, we group issues like agriculture and forestry, adaptation and mitigation, are, are very complex, you know, and you know, as was as was said this morning, when it comes to red, it has so much potential for success, but it, it really has to be done very, very carefully. And I think how adaptation factors into red will actually, you know, help help make it clear whether it's been successful or not. So there are risks involved. Um, Catherine oversees um, sixty billion dollars worth of uh, a portfolio of that size, and so her. Her perspective will be very, very important also from, from the, the, the perspective of financial tools and, and how we disseminate um, the, the natural capital, so to speak. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to begin with Phil Cottle, and your five minutes starts now. <laughs> 